welcome everybody to a very special live stream from somewhere a secret undisclosed location in the baltimore highlands the the hills above baltimore i have no idea if any of that is totally nonsensical or not uh but joining me is a special guest chip saltzman hello uh, and our other special guest anthony burkett who is the Hi there, writer of the third winter a ocs insta classic that landed a couple of years ago as well as a couple new pieces from Decision Games that we have recently taken a look at on the channel. So thanks, guys, for coming by and uh, inviting us into the secret halls of uh, the, the, the top secret playtest. I presume everybody had to have, like, bought, be blindfolded as they were brought into this location, by the way. <laughs> Not even the English are that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us about what exactly what's going on here you guys are kind of in like an upstairs of some commercial building um playing some large thing so so you know exactly where are you and what's going on without of course revealing the secret speed so on you can kick off okay. chip will do uh, we are in uh, suburban Baltimore uh, this is the attic space actually over a wine shop and a drugstore. Uh, it's been converted into what we're calling the Game Emporium. Uh, a lot of the games here are actually, sadly, the estate of a, of a dedicated gamer, Mark Gutag. Uh, but we've been using it for the last year or so as the gathering for the Baltimore, uh, uh, we call them the Nebo Grognards. Uh, they've been getting together every Monday night for 40 years to, uh, to play games. This gathering... Uh, is the whole of people who ordinarily go to Tempe, to Consum World, and decided instead to do Baltimore uh, for a week-long playtest of two sets of games. One is the uh, uh, combination of Third Winter, Crimea, uh, Forgotten Battles, and Hero City, which is Tony's uh, quartet of games, one published, one soon to be published, yeah, and one in two development. more in yeah. development, yeah, yeah. Uh, which comprised uh, what he's calling Ostron. And the second is a first time ever uh, deployment of Ostron 45. And this is uh, the, the scenario we're doing is essentially the last hundred days from, yeah. Yeah, from yeah. Uh, uh, January, January the 12th. the 12th of 1945 to the fall of Berlin. We've, we're about a month into it in game time. First time it's ever been on the map. And let me tell you, the German, uh, or sorry, the Soviet armies are massive. And the Germans are no longer the, the masters of the, the, the map. So how, how many days have you guys been playing now? Several, correct? Since last, we set up last we, Saturday. We, say, yeah, yeah. we started Sunday morning, okay. uh, and uh, we have been playing uh, playing since. So I guess we're five or six days into it. We've got about yeah. a month of uh, of of, of uh, map time uh, or game time uh, along. So you know you can get through this in uh, in, in a couple of weeks. A lot of it is just how much stuff the Soviets have to move. I've been posting pictures of on uh, mm -hmm. on Facebook including one we call the aneurysm because it was a five deep crowd of soviets pressing against one line of uh, of uh, germans and when the dam burst kapow they went across to eastern prussia in no time yeah, welcome lot, to lot, 1945. Lot of, yeah and there's a lot of new exclusive rules that so the guys are trying to get used to i mean there's some really experienced players i mean thomas thomas butner has flown in from auckland new zealand to do it so and he's you know, an excellent process. Yeah, player. we have uh, five or six uh, folks from Europe and people from all over the U.S., Thomas Butner mm -hmm. from uh, New Zealand. So there's about 20 of us all together that have been playing. A number of mm -hmm. us are local to the yes, of course. Washington yeah. uh, uh, area. No. So would you like to uh, have a tour of the two the two battlefronts? Absolutely. Let's. Uh, first, I want to ask, yes, but first I want to ask how many people you have at each of these, these games. We have uh, 20 people. There's 20. Five, yeah, ten, yes. ten and ten. Five, uh, five aside. Ten and ten. For, okay. Uh, for for each side, I think there's four Germans and five Soviets. Or five yeah. Six Soviets. Yeah, we have a bit five, of a rotation, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. 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 Okay. So go yes. go ahead. Give us walk us around and and, and explain what's going on, and then <laughs> we will come, we'll come back. Yeah. We're doing this in tandem. So yeah. One of us question. can voiceover, and one of us can uh, you, you point can, that out. And I'll, I'll keep the so that works. On you. Actually, I'm gonna I'm right. gonna hide you, Tony, so we can focus on the phone. So we'll be okay. That's great. Right. 
its uh, collection of flat towers and, and what have you. I guess we won't uh, be doing that. Away, uh, is the Vistula, and that's where the, the Soviets have been uh, have been massing. So if, as I kind of work my way uh, towards the east, you have Berlin. The line of fortifications is where the Silau Heights is. Yes, correct. Uh, and then you have across uh, past the woods, you have the plains of Poland. Here's the Vistula. Uh, and the defenders who are reeling backwards from, uh, from a series of defeats uh, towards what this is what's left of Army Group North. Yeah, so you got Fourth Second Army, Fourth Panzer here. Roy's Roy's doing a, a monstrous attack with the for some of the Belarusian fronts there as well. Yep. So Army Group Center has a thin line of uh, of, of troops that that uh, try to counterattack, and now mm -hmm. they're headed backwards from the, what's left of them from the. Uh, from the counterattack. Here's a 50 mile gap uh, <laughs> between Army Group Center and uh, uh, and Army uh, Group A Army and 17th Army, Army, where we're just fortifying yep. the lower Vistula, uh, sorry, lower Oder around the German right. factories because we we can't afford to lose the Breslau area with, and things like that with synthetic yeah, fuels. Breslau's and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And then this is the line along the Oder and uh, in the background there, uh, in the background there is uh, uh, the just captured Krakow, and some of the uh, some of the first German fortress yeah. cities are about to be assaulted. We've got some pockets. I mean, Warsaw's yeah, still holding some... out, and places like that. Yeah. Yep. Then we have the the Carpathian Mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some battling that's been going on in there, uh, and then it swings down into Hungary. So. Army groups uh, uh, south. So uh, this is Vienna. Uh, just past Vienna is and towards Bratislava, where there's a big battle, big battle there's on the big Czech border going on right now. Um, uh, and then way in the backfield here, there's one beleaguered <laughs> hex of, of uh, Budapest still holding out, and it's a good thing because when Budapest falls, all those blue units, the Hungarians, uh, lay down their arms, and mm. uh, that. Uh, what the Germans regard as bad. <laughs> and then here south of Lake Balaton, going uh, out into Yugoslavia. Yeah, we had some real action here earlier last night and earlier today. The Germans had a counterattack that plunged along the Drava into open terrain, sadly near uh, a tank uh, army which had been massing uh, and which has uh, delivered a counter blow and obliterated one Panzer division and mm. is two. Two, two Panzer divisions and is pushing its way hard against what's left of uh, of the Army Group uh, yeah. down in uh, in this it's area. Army Group, F, yeah. Army Group F, yeah. So you've got um, the forces retreating out of the Balkans, adding to this. You've got Tito's army in there. And round Zagreb, which is this area, as we go into Yugoslavia, there's a rather fierce battle developing. So uh, playing the Germans, uh, you have to maintain a good sense of humor. Uh, there are opportunities <laughs> there for, are. Yeah, uh, yeah. for counterattack and for stymieing the Russians. The yeah. Russians have been taking a lot of losses, but they can afford it a lot better than the Germans. And a few other interesting okay. things are being modeled here. Uh, I'll come up here in just a minute. Um, I guess I'll show this one other area. This is uh, Königsberg, uh, now surrounded uh, in the port. And then up here is the Corlin pocket. Uh, pocket. Um, and not much of the original front line is still there. So the, the, back. The, the Russians have pushed in much more uh, assertively than happened in, uh, in real life. And I'm going to pull back just for a second so we can see some of the folks uh, at work here. Uh, Thomas Putner, uh, Roy Lane, uh, and Jim Hambacher, uh, Jim Hambacher <laughs> Curtis Bear, Matt McCormick, um, uh, are many of the uh, the Soviet players, uh, Chuck Sukup here is Chuck. Uh, Army Group North. I, I did want to, to, to speak for just a minute. Uh, we're continuing evolution of the front command system and adding higher level headquarters to the uh, Axis side as well with their Army Group uh, commands, Army uh, commands, which operate as a, a funnel for supply uh, uh, to the front. And now the Soviets have evolved their deep battle capabilities to the point where tank armies materialize and uh, uh, drive through gaps created by the yeah. uh, the fronts in a very uh, effective fashion. This is 
This yeah. is not your 1942 no. No. Soviets. No. These no. are some. These no. are some veteran no. formations. In fact, I would say AR-4 is the new AR-3 for the Soviets, and AR-4 is the new AR-5 for the Germans. Yeah, we've we've so fronts have moved more into theater warfare. So there's a Belarusian, a Baltic, and a Ukrainian theater with fronts in it. So there's a more coordinated approach to Soviet actions. And as Chip mentioned, we're playing a lot of, there's a lot of rules that are pertinent to 45, but on the strategic side, armies, army groups, we brought that in. We simplified the supply lines and trucks and wagons, etc. And tank armies, which Thomas has flown in to do, concept, uh, as Chip mentioned, deep echelon warfare, uh, strikes uh, within the OCS rule booklet, but allows to get that deep strike and deep penetration. Yeah. And so it makes for quite a uh, uh, quite a game, but it's also a lot of fun. Okay. Um, any questions here, Gary? Do you want us to focus on something in particular? We'd uh, also have to give you a tour of the well, so we're getting. I got a question in the chat. How many maps are we are we looking at here? It's it's a large number. I could tell. Yes. Uh, four, eight, probably be about ten. Eight or ten. About ten maps. We've we sliced some of it, or we folded some of it under uh, uh, to give yeah, us so I'm we can reach the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the, and um, please, anyone who's watching. The, the Germany maps are like phase two. Some of the other maps are only phase one. So don't think about color palettes or anything like that. And I've cut some of them. So I would say probably 10 maps in total. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is um, uh, it, this is the first time this has ever been laid yeah. out in, in play. So this is ages away from, uh, you know, actually arriving at a gamer's uh, doorstep. And, and we would likely slice this into several uh, uh, sec uh, sections. We think there's a one map so, Poland yeah. game that could Poland, be Baltic, uh, get end of Baltic gap yeah. sort of things. I think, I think there's a Poland, uh, a Poland, yeah, uh, uh, a Germany game. And I'll tell you, the, the one in, in Hungary has been very interesting. Down in Yugoslavia, yeah. which extends out from Hungarian Rhapsody, either way, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, it for me, it's as Chip said, first time on the table, you want to see the Russians going west. You want to see if there's a game for both sides. You want to see the supply le levels yeah, it are right. It Special rules, apart. well, it doesn't fall apart. And the fact we're still playing after a week is a very good sign. It's very yeah, experienced yeah, players. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of fine tuning that'll have to, that'll have to go yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. Should we go look at the other game? Yes, please. Okay, we're marching over there. Now we're going over here to uh, the current Ostfront, which I guess for the moment we'll call Ostfront One. That's um, a good call. Yeah. Which is Third Winter and the Hero City and um, and Forgotten Battles. Yeah. And it looks like you do you have Crimea down there too? We do. Uh, they, 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 can, they, they conquer. The... Yeah, Crimea is, is finished. I'm standing at approximately Odessa. So here is the Crimea. And the way Crimea will uh, attach on to Third Winter is, is sort of at the bottom right of the Third Winter map. But I'll tell you, it really changes the action uh, around where uh, the fourth Ukrainian front is in, uh, in Third Winter. So that's uh, Crimea. Crimea is in the printing process at, at MMP. Yep. yep. And Crimea, uh, I'm, I'm told, is going to be coming out. Uh, I'm gonna say, but Brian, uh, Brian uh, told the me the other day he was. So? Yeah, he's like they're just the components are coming in and it yeah. will be so shipping soon. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, the third winter map set. Uh, mm -hmm. These folks started in uh, the January campaign, January yeah. 1944. Uh, there was a number of dramatic uh, lopping off of German uh, forces, particularly in the Dnieper uh, bend. But they've put a line together and are uh, now in a, in a rugby scrum shoving match. Uh, and so it, it, it's been really static, I would say. They're about eight or nine turns into it, but things are really different. Uh, on the battles, battles yeah, so let's yeah, walk right. around that this way a little bit. So now I'm going up to Army Group Center's uh, area. Uh, here, uh, I've played several games of Forgotten Battles, and I haven't had this kind of move. Oof. There was a there was a huge fight up around Polotsk and uh, uh, and Vitebsk in the north. So there's a big bulge in the German lines there. Uh, not so much around Mogilev or Arshev, but down in the south, Marshal Rokossovsky has gone bananas, slicing into the German lines, uh, setting up several major surrounding areas, and uh, 
uh, a lot of popular troops. And can you point at Minsk? Uh, Minsk is very uncomfortably close to a lot of marauding uh, Russians like those guys uh, who are headed that way fast. So, so I think, yeah, they cut north when yeah. the Second Army was collapsing for, right. a, for a difference. Rather than go west, the guys... Um, tried strategy i think mm. it's a good one to cut through yeah. yeah so this looks a lot more like migration it was uh, always our plan to have a drive to polotsk on the assumption mm -hmm. that might fail mm -hmm. draw all the reserves over and then hit here together with a very heavily reinforced area there. third nice. ukrainian has lost nearly 20 divisions to this area yeah, nice. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. No, no good. So, uh, so it, it looks like there. It looks like a lot of the Soviet effort went into that center section against Army Group Center, rather yes. than in the more open terrain in the south. This is, uh, you know, meat grinder level terrain here for the most part. Yeah, it's as I recall, down. that but, section but, around Minsk is a little bit more open. Yeah, but yeah. mobile action can really happen, even though it's a mm. swamp. The way through. Yeah, they're through. They're through. They're through, they're through to the open terrain uh, down here. So uh, that's what uh, we Germans call a problem. Yeah. This, so by the way, this is the. Um, these are virtual direction maps for forgotten battles, which you probably haven't seen, Gary yet. So they mate mate perfectly with third mm. winter, as you can see them across here. Uh, and Chip and myself are working really hard to get forgotten battles submitted for the end of the year yeah so that's what our target that's our target i'm working on the well, production encounters and uh the production uh scenarios right now um this also as you combine it with third winter leads to some very interesting action uh we're just talking about an interesting scenario you could make of the northern part of third winter and the southern part of Forgot battles because that's where the deepest penetration really occurred in, in, yeah. four, in early '44. That's already on my laptop being yeah. coming out. Yeah. So then to the north, uh, the Germans are withdrawing from Slowly, their surely. lines uh, now to the west of Leningrad, uh, and they're kind of pulling back to the Narwa line, which is right here. Mm -hmm. uh, Leningrad is just up here, and. Uh, everyone always seems to be very happy to see the Finns. So the Finns are up here. Um, I suppose we've got to we'll work on some kind of a a, uh, a game around the Soviet offensive. The continuation here. war, the continuation yeah. It'd be war. A nice scenario, small map footage. Yep. May forty four, quite not that hard to put together. Yep. The, the counters are all ready. The counters will be in the Hero City because there's if only a few extra to carry it through to May forty four. If you want to do that walk fight, yep. yeah. So. Uh, so as I said, the Narwa line here, and then Lake Ilmen, uh, and the lines have been kind of going down past Skov mm. and Staraya Rusha. Here's Skov here at the bottom of, of Lake Skov, and then uh, a per, uh, the is this the Panther line? What's the line? Yes, there? it's the Panther line, northern end of the Panther line. Yeah. And these are the last playtest maps I just received before I flew out the pre-production the production maps, and they then fit flush with forgotten battles. So then from the Crimea. Up to Finland, you've got 4, 8, 12, 13 fully production quality maps ready to go in game. So it's uh, it looks pretty impressive when, with the new maps when they're put on. Yeah. Here's the Gulf of, uh, uh, of Riga. So this covers the same terrain or, or location as Baltic Gap, but this mm. is this is pre Baltic Gap. That, yeah, that moment, was kind of the moment. northern part of that region. Yeah. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll pull back a little bit. Can, yeah, kind of get, get panoramic yeah. shots of uh, of the, the the entire theater in both cases. So I'll do that in just a minute. Yes. So we have uh, Mark Fazarkali, who's been managing this game as well as being Russian commander. Marcus Randall, who's There's been Mr. playing. Marcus, Marcus, yeah, say hi to Marcus sure for know. me. Bill Quas, who's a, a German leader, looks like he's going to get changed for dinner. <laughs> and Antonella Sal Salva. Savatucci, Savatucci. Savatucci. who's come all the way from Italy and unfortunately his colleague Paolo has just had to go back. Those guys have been playing the Germans and Russians in the south and I'm really thankful that they've come across as well. And a number of other players who are literally Rich Hughes here behind from the UK as well. All of them are camera shy, unlike Chip and me. Oh, and Chip Farr, who many of you know. Mr. Chip. Yeah. 
So a, a couple of the things I just want to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to highlight while we're walking uh, about here. We've been printing the OCS combat tables large and hanging them poster size from the uh, from the wall. It, that is surprisingly useful, not having to look for them. <laughs> we have Stalin glued to the table uh, yeah. uh, here. I will also say it's been very interesting to have my third winter maps and Crimea maps uh, during the current struggle with uh, uh, Ukraine and, uh, and Russia, because a lot of the activities and, and locations are right on these maps uh, of what's been going on currently. That's been kind of interesting to, prep. to see. This is the level of prep we've been doing. We have old binders of all the rules and uh, information and charts and so forth for players and a lot of notes that go into the uh, into the play test. The other thing I wanted to show folks as we walk over this way, um, this is some of the, the infrastructure that the Soviets have. Uh, mm, in tank army charts. Of their tank armies that would draw, build up, and then return to torment the Germans. Mm. Uh, this is their RVGK chart where their units More are theater related uh, now, yeah. Uh, uh, rebuilt. Mm. Uh, and this is their dead pile. Yeah. Uh, so they've taken some losses. This has not been easy for them. But let me show you the dead pile for the German side. Pa pan slowly. <laughs> I'll pan slowly because there's a lot of them. Uh, the Germans have really taken some losses, and that's what's going to happen. When I've played beyond the Rhine, mm. sometime around March, the German lines just fall apart. Well, 40, 45 was an absolute. It's war, war of annihilation, and it you know it made the earlier years of the war to some extent go, be seeming <laughs> minuscule in some ways. But uh, but it's still. I think it's still there's still a great game for the oh, Germans. Yeah, so Germans can strike this all the way to the end. It's just very, very hard to it's slow that Russian and then, down. But their quality is steadily degrading. This yes. is their uh, their yep. reinforcements laid out. And, and the new 45 their, Panzer new Kampfgruppe divisions. Yeah, Panzer division yeah. and so forth. So, okay, so that's a that's a view of our uh, of our setup. And then we'll talk and answer as many questions as you can think to ask us. Mm. All right. Awesome. Is this sound working for you? This is okay so far? Uh, the sound works good. Okay. Uh, good, good. Uh, we're getting a little bit of lag, so I think we're going to put you, set you guys both down in front of Tony's laptop and, okay. uh, and, and drop the phone while we kind of talk now that we've walked through every, you know, everything that's going on, which is a lot. Okay. Do I pull you that one up? No. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I'll drop, I'll drop off. Do you, or do you want to? Which there we go. I can kill mine, or should okay. we just work off one phone, yeah. Gary? And I hang you up. You can work off the, uh, if either one. I don't care. You guys can work off the phone or work off the laptop. However, uh, Chip, your microphone is muted. Your microphone is muted. There we there go. You go. There you go. So there I'll, I'll just set it up this way. Yeah. There you go. And the sound is the sound is good. Yep, that's fine. So yeah, let's all right. So sound up a little bit. we're gonna we're gonna we've already had a bunch of questions in the chat about sort of the logistics of how this thing is gonna Oops. is gonna end up happening. So so we know that correct me if I'm misstating anything, but the but the current Ost sure, so plan yeah. is gonna uh, continue well, with Crimea, then with Forgotten Battles, and then with Hero City. And at that point, across four big games and one small game, you'll have the entire East Front from uh, September 43 to what May of 44, right? Are those right. dates right. correct? That's correct. That's correct. All right. And then so the 45 series of games will will begin immediately uh, after that. So you'll be able to theoretically at least continuously play. Yes. I have 40, <laughs> Gary, I have the 44 games, but um, we were, there were some other guys developing a game. That, mm. So we backed off a little bit on that for a while. But the 44 game, you may well see at Sandusky. So the aim mm. is, in a series of games, unless other people get games out, you can be, eventually be yeah. able to run from September 43 to May 45 in a modular series of games. Some may overlap, some you may want to have, some you may not want to have, but that's the aim. We were just piloting the 45 because I wanted just to test some deep the tank army rules in 45 with a shorter map set before we go back to 44 immigration. Mm -hmm. So you may see that at Sandusky, depending what you want to play and try. 
And, and I would say that from an OCS perspective, there's also people actively working on a number of other designs. Yes. So Stefan Aquaviva uh, has been working on a, a summer 1943 uh, campaign game that'll cover kind of from Tula down to Rostov. Uh, it would have the Battle of Kursk if you want to fight that or a lot of other strategic options if you want to try something else. Uh, and that'll essentially go from, uh, you know, when you can start driving around again uh, in the summer of 43 uh, until the race to the Dnieper uh, in, in the autumn of 1943. Uh, Tony Zverchuk has been uh, working on a, an, an Italy game for quite some time. I uh, you know, that may progress. Uh, the Bagration uh, a game that Tony referred to uh, it, it, uh, is being worked on. There's a, uh, a Normandy game that people have been uh, have been playtesting. They've been posting a lot about that. Um, there's also uh, another game coming out very soon, Luzon, uh, which is aimed at new players. Uh, it's a small game. It has about uh, 10 maneuver units for the Japanese and three times that for the U.S. Filipinos. It's a short game, five turns, and the uh, uh, experienced players can get to it in about 90 minutes. So it's literally playable in an evening, but it's going to be packaged in a magazine with a lot of information on how to learn and how to play OCS. That'll be, that's going to be next after Crimea. And that designer, whose name is uh, Mat uh, Yutaka Matsura from Japan, uh, is now working on a, a game about South Burma. That's in the very early stages of, uh, of designing that. And, uh, you know, so people who are interested in, in designing games, please let me know. Uh, or if you're interested in playtesting or proofreading, there's a lot of uh, a lot of activity that goes into one of these. We don't like to publish an OCS game without really extensive so play testing and proofreading and so far. Okay, end of OCS commercial. <laughs> okay, so so to what extent are you play testing with in in general, right? Not necessarily the stuff you guys are doing like today. Um, in general, what sort of percentage or emphasis are you giving to physical play tests at clubs or convention or you know however it's working out um, versus play testing on Vassal? Are you able to use Vassal in a productive way for play testing purposes? Because I know when when yeah, I, I saw the play tests of of cross channel attack and Crimea, it was it was over Vassal. Yeah. So uh, once there is a uh, a solid set of counters uh, and a, uh, we can get that to uh, Herman Wu and Jeff Coyle, who are a va fabulous Vassal support uh, uh, folks, champions. Yeah. So we have a third winner. Uh, and Crimea module that's ready to go as soon as Crimea uh, comes out. We'll, uh, we've not put together a Vassal module for Gotten Battles yet. That one's primarily been done uh, with a, with physical, but it's been played through two dozen years. times. Three yeah, years. some people have played it. Yeah. Marcus has probably played it through the campaigns five or six times yeah, with uh, his okay. COT team. Uh, yeah. at least. So there's a number of teams that have been uh, have been playing it, and the Columbus, the El you know, team yeah, has the played Columbus it. Columbus team has, has played it. The uh, the Vassal version of uh, Cross Channel Attack has a number of teams that are uh, that have been working it. So, uh, uh, the Vassal, you know, there's only two guys who make the, these things on Vassal, and so the, you know, once once you, and they have to have you know a, a reasonable set of counters and a re, and, and a map and so forth. So, for example, the uh, the cursed one already has a Vassal module because it uses uh, uh, case blue and uh, and GB two maps uh, uh, to and quite a proportion of the counters. They made yeah, some extra the ones. Up. Are very made Stefan similar. and his friends have made yeah. some extra ones up and things like that. Yeah. So so that so uh, Vassal is a really important tool. In fact, at, at my house, I haven't set up a game. Of years, I do it all. On, yeah. Do it all on Vassal. Yeah. I mean, just from a design perspective, Gary, you just need the physical thing. You need to put, stand over it, step back, move quickly. It's far easier. That's the reason I print them out and make the counters yeah. up as well. That's the one thing about Vassalus. It's hard to see the big picture. It, it's hard to, it, yeah, it is. You, it's like anything on a screen. You're scrolling up and down. So having it laid out, you can tweak, move. Yeah, if you yeah. luckily yeah. have a So space, until we uh, print wall-sized computer screens that yeah. are touch screens yeah. and do Vassal on that, uh, we're still working with the small screen. So I'm being asked, and I, I I felt like we answered this question already, but Michael Simon's asking if eventually, right? You know, this this is not going to be by spring. 
Will there be an ability to do a complete playthrough from 43 to 45 eventually? Eventually, there probably will be. Uh, I just have to live long enough. Yeah, we have to live long enough. But I, 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 there's a couple of practical things to uh, uh, to look at with that. The, the Eastern Front uh, warfare changed substantially, particularly the Soviets. Uh, you know, they were already decent by the time of Kursk, and they leveled up their armored warfare from uh, for the uh, the counterattacks after Kursk. They leveled up again uh, in early 1944. They had their deep battle in, in good order by uh, Bagration, and by 1945, they would level up again. So anything that, that comes through that period of time has to account for the way the Soviets continually improve their operational warfare. At the same time... Yeah, I was just saying, I mean, I think from a, so to answer the question, that it, it, it will be possible. You just have, as a designer, you have to try and give the opportunity to recreate what actually happened. Yeah. And that, you know, and within, a, without breaking OCS as a game system so people can pick it up and play it, just read the exclusive rules, Gary, and then try this out. So, as you said, the deep best, you've got to have that thing for Bagration, you've got to have that for 45. You've got to have a more a strong Russians are hit shooting right, where they go. Right. You know, there's but, got to be those sort of things. But, but also the German forces degraded over time. Yeah. They went from you know mo mobile uh, uh, armies to mobile corps to mobile divisions making local counterattacks. Yeah. Yeah. But you also have to. So you need the higher headquarter functionality for the the Germans as well. Yeah. But there's another thing. If anyone who's played sick a long case blue game or uh, you know, a GB2 for, for you know, for a long, long campaign. Um, it, it, the further you go, you know, sometimes the replacement rates or the force structures get badly out of whack. And, and I think that twice a year, kind of in the, in the mud periods, uh, if you have something that goes all the way through, you've got to have a, rebalancing is the wrong word, but a uh, but a reset of uh, uh, and an, and a you know reformation of a lot of the uh, the armies, or it just goes completely off the rails. Yeah, and again, and that, that there's a great opportunity with 43 to 45, because rough, bar the Balkan exploits in Romania, May there's quite a quiet period on the Eastern Front around May. Yeah, you get withdrawals in the late the earlier series of games, while the Russians then build up for Bagration, and there's a big push through. And then again it's in late forty four, it goes quiet again yeah, before the January forty five. Yeah. So that's it's yeah, it's kind of like there is some good break points for game design and game production. Yeah. That isn't like oh my god, he stopped it too early. So right. there's, there is right. a good break point. That was that was a long answer to a short, short question. question. Yeah. So um, in right. terms of so the, the you know Crimea is any time basically, right? We're we're going to see Crimea pretty soon. We, uh, I, uh, and, and it, it's pretty small and self-contained. And for those who don't know, it's going to have both the 42 and 43 or 44 camp, Crimean campaigns in it, right? So you'll, and that was kind of a, a uh, Tony, who was, the, who was the other fellow that was involved in the design of the other side of it? Guy, isn't it? Guy, Guy, Guy Wild. Wild job, yeah. yes. right. It'll yeah. actually cover more time than any other OCS game because it starts in yeah. September mm -hmm. of 41. Mm -hmm. And uh, April, May of '44, but, but it's it's different. It's it's scenarios. It's not a complete yeah. So thing. there's so there's. A, I think if you, it's an excellent game in itself. It's like a reluctant enemy. It's an excellent learning tool for yep. later war exploits with OCS. It links with Third Winter and transforms that. So there's a number of packages I think within the game box for them yeah. that is of interest yeah. to a wide range of people. Yep. Yeah. So I also want to talk about the sort of higher level commands that you brought in with Third Winter and the sort of uh, slightly modified strategic logistics changes to OCS that that decreased the necessity of you having to to truck you know fifty supply points a turn uh, you know from one end of the map to the other necessarily and then how that's going to change or evolve if at all for Forgotten Battles as we enter a uh, a very different it's very different place right it's it's the terrain is much more congested versus third winter where you have these huge open sections until you hit the, the carpathians um very different tone of play in forgotten battles versus uh, uh versus third winter so so are there going to be any is there going to be any need to, to make adjustments to that higher level command and supply system 
four forgotten battles. I, minor ones, I would say. The, the, the funnel structure stays the same with, with fronts as the main uh, 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 way that so the Soviets managed their, uh, their war effort at that point. Uh, probably not that much to the uh, to the Germans. They, they, there's some minor ones. You know, there weren't as many headquarters, army headquarters there. So, you know, the, the minimums that are front us maintain will be different. I think we're going to progressively carry on what I would say streamlining the paperwork. You know, the tokens for air bases. That can we aggregate trucks and wagons and clean that up? Can we utilize supplies through armies, army groups, down to cores? So literally make it a, a little bit of a more command structure, which people have said OCS hasn't had, but, and for the Germans, but also streamline back office operations. And same with the, the Russians on the front side of things, other things we can do there. And to answer your second part, yes, it is a different type of battle. You're going to have a you know penal assault battalion, you know, things where it's a far more combined arms, uh, fight around cities and, and fortresses and the panther line and things like that. So you have to you have to plan your attacks, your reserve movement, your reserve artillery a lot more than just rolling around with tanks in the Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that you know a lot of you know we're not changing the core OCS no. way of doing things. So supply points are going to be there. They're going to have to move around uh, uh, the map. The uh, uh, you don't, as you say, need to, to truck them necessarily across the map, but you sure need to truck them from where your front is out to out to the front. Mm -hmm. and woe unto you if you get surrounded and you don't have them there. So, so there's a there's a lot of uh, that that needs to uh, that needs to take place. And and the real function of a supply point is a is it forces choices on the players. Yeah. You know where do they put their their main emphasis? What do they choose to build hedgehogs or move units around or conduct attacks? It, 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 it forces you to really make some, some difficult choices. And there's always too much to do that, that you, than you would like to do. So I think one of the most interesting things at OCS is, uh, is how you really have to decide what it is you're truly trying to get done this turn. Those kinds of things are absolutely yeah, I'd, good. Things. I'd say for um, experienced OCS players, the, the understanding of troops, so the cavalry in the swamp, the use of single tank, you know, guard tank brigades to support an attack without the use, expensive use of tank corps, because what use are they in there? They're there, but there's a far better, tighter use, assault engineers, that sort of thing. There's a lot of um, smaller artillery barrages, things like that. There's a lot more about yeah. pe people who are experienced with the system as well will find a lot more of... Um, what they used to, and uh, the wet troops. Yeah, we we did some exhaustive, particularly on the Soviet side. I did a really careful study of all the different uh, 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 offensives conducted by the the fronts. How well they did, how well they uh, they did not do, because they had a number of completely failed frontal uh, uh, offensives. In fact, the game is called the Forgotten Battles. Uh, after uh, the research that Colonel Glantz did, where he uncovered a lot of the action that went on there that hadn't been reported on much yeah. because the most successful front commander, Rokosowski, uh, was uh, ethnically Polish, and he really showed up another front commander who was a protege of uh, Zhukov's. And when that guy became the head of the Soviet uh, defense ministry, and they were going to be running the, uh, uh, and, and they're writing the histories. They couldn't have Rokosowski overshadowed him. So they, for the first time, the Soviets actively suppressed uh, a successful offensive. Yeah, and, and a lot of the history came out in, uh, in Glantz's book with really only recently uh, uh, open Soviet archives. It was fascinating to, to, to hear from him about the research that he'd done. Yeah, we went, to see, we went to see him. The game's going to be dedicated to him because he's been a great scholar. And you, Gary, you autographed one of the maps, so we may, mm -hmm. may even offer that as like a prize or a raffle. There you go. Because he's, <laughs> he's autographed the Forgotten Battles map, Colonel David Glenn. So, yes, it's, um, yeah. That's awesome. So here's a question, I guess more for you, Chip. So with Third Winter, you know, we see some, some additions and some refinements of the sort of uh, higher level command and logistics to account for the things that we've just talked about. 
Yep. Are other OCS designers other than Tony also incorporating uh, these de these newer developments in uh, in in their OCS projects? The the mo the other one that's really looking hard at this are the guys working on the cross channel attack because uh, there you have an allied uh, offensive that virtually used no rail. Uh, it was all done uh, mm. by a truck. You, you mm -hmm. know, all express and uh, uh, and so forth, but they went all the way across France. And the reason they they stopped where uh, you know in, in in September was they simply got to the limits of what they could manage with 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 truck, and they needed to then convert over to the uh, to the rails. The Germans, on the other hand, uh, are basically operating without a rail net west, uh, west of the Loire because the Allied air campaign had destroyed it. Apologies there, that was five yeah, shifts five, against. Five shifts against uh, in, a, in a vital combat. Yeah, welcome to my forgotten battles Thanks. game. Exactly. So um, there, there is going to be a uh, essentially a, uh, uh, a truck version of a rail net. Uh, but again, using it as a conduit for getting supply up to front, uh, having you know, decisions to be made on the supply points that you have on the map. Uh, those are those are going to be the same. How we are this reflects the way the the campaign actually unfolded. All right, we just had a lag spike. Hopefully, it'll it'll it has resolved itself now. Uh, it's all good. We are getting a compliments about all the cheering and hooting and hollering in, in the background, so we can imagine <laughs> it the was exciting developments that are now occurring. Is the defenders of Budapest successfully yes. repelling yeah. the Soviets? Yes. Well, no. There we go. Yeah. When when I'm attacking, it's it's oh defender surprise five <laughs> columns down. How about that again for the twelfth time today? Anyway, well, that was... well, I answered the question. Uh, well, I'm happy to keep talking uh, about that. The the um, what we're not doing and what I'm not interested in as the you know as the overall OCS honcho is I'm not interested in changing fundamental tenets of OCS, you know, the prize mechanism, the, the turn, uh, the initiative uh, function, the use of supply points. It's more, it's more you know, can we, can we make the me mechanical handling of those yeah. uh, reasonably uh, efficient? Some people like doing it, and that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, and some people don't. It, it was, you know, third winter, I had some people who really liked the visual uh, order of arrival and others like the more traditional style. Cool. I'll make both of them. Um, so, you know, those, the, 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 the core package is not, uh, is not changing. Cool. 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 I know that, uh, I had a similar reaction with cross channel attack, which is like, well, what's this? I, 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 you know, you mean, I don't get to physically move the red ball express counters all the way across France. And then I thought about it and I'm like, oh yeah, that's probably that's probably why he's doing this. Um, so so I think that's a good idea. I mean, it's just, you're not removing supply, right? You're just kind of deciding, okay, you're going to get a, an allocation to fronts you, um, you're, and they, or, or, army H, or army groups or however, wherever it is. Yeah, you're building a, a pipeline. And so mm -hmm. the, in that one, the supply materializes at the army headquarters. Uh, you know, it is then distributed the, the usual way out to the uh, uh, out to the actual uh, uh, units, but uh, the length of that supply line determines how much of that supply uh, turns up. And it mm -hmm. to be something when when the breakout happens and the Allies go across France, it happens fast, and uh, and, and that's that's really interesting to see. I mean, I mean, somebody's going to ask either now, and I know the answer, but I'm going to let you say it. Uh, about cross-channel attack, because I, as, as well as I think a lot of folks are excited about that, right? It's a topic we haven't seen in OCS before, and we're, we want to see how OCS handles it. Uh, the game will start with the landings. Is that an accurate statement, or is it the intention to kind of start with Cobra as a default, and and you, you, the landings are there if you want them? No, the, 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 there's a Cobra scenario, uh, which is essentially the breakout scenario, but you can start with the landings. Uh, and, and work your way uh, through with that. We've had quite a discussion about alternate landing uh, options uh, from a couple of perspectives. If, if you know, if you want to explore alternate landings, you need about five maps to cover. Mm -hmm. You know, from uh, from from Holland all the way around Brittany to uh, to the Loire. 
uh, and not down in the, the lower uh, the lower left hand corner of the map. So that gives you places to uh, to explore. You know, the more you look at what the Allied planners did, they considered probably a dozen other beaches and they said, oh, my heavens, Normandy is by far the best. Uh, and that's borne out by what, you know, the way the game designers are saying, you'd be nuts to land anywhere else. Uh, but I think it is also something that people, a lot of people are going to want to uh, explore, if only to assure themselves that, that ooh, landing at Pas de Calais, very bad idea. But be interesting to be interesting to try that and uh, uh and find it out so that's so you know if you are concentrating on the battle in the hedgerows and you know the the initial breakout and getting to paris then you need about two maps so there's still a lot of discussion about the exact form that's gonna uh that's gonna take yep okay so let me ask about sort of overall schedule before coming kind of coming back to tony to wrap us up um, we know that Crimea will be next, and it'll, it's coming pretty soon. And we, we, you said Luzon is coming next after that. Um, right. After Luzon, um, can we expect Forgotten Battles to be the next one? That'll be the next one. Um, awesome. Uh, and then Hero City is is not as fertile along in development. They're really after Forgotten Battles, you have three, you know, major design efforts that are underway. Hero City mm -hmm. is one. Uh, the the cursed uh, uh, game, the season, that, in hell, yeah, the season in hell, as he calls it, is uh, the one Stefan Aquaviva is working on, and the cross channel attack, the Normandy uh, effort as well. Yeah, that have, that have been working on, Ex the you know, the exact sequencing, the exact uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of decisions to be made there, but there's three uh, three large games, the 24 onwards, yeah, isn't yeah that that are that, that are are there for 2024 uh, and, and, and the onward. South, that South Burma, the guy South, doing the South mm -hmm. Burma. The one mapper, isn't it? Something as well like that or something. He's got a couple maps. Couple there's, maps. There's, yeah. That one's an initial, I would say that's it's an initial very one. early design as opposed to development. So uh, I I can't say which one is next because it because there's a lot of depends on, particularly as far as the, uh, the development work. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of other considerations because we're, the people we you know people like tony and myself in essence he's a freelance designer i'm a freelance editor if you want to compare us to uh you know how the way a book gets published and mmp are the publisher and they they have a strong a, a voice in this because they are a commercial operation and they say yes. we can if they got all of asl this, stuff it might you never know yeah, this, it's is, print the, yeah, this is the this is the one we want to print next mm. uh so they're the ones who do it so there we are um but fear not, we do press for our yeah, games we to be published. Yeah, yeah, I live near MMP, so yes. I can go and harass them yeah. on a monthly basis. Yeah. And I they're... harangue Brian Yaus all the time. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, so so I, 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 and also they control the production schedule. So yeah. it's so a lot of that is up to them. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a question to kind of go back to Tony from a design standpoint. You can weigh in on this if you like to, Chip. But, but do you uh, attempt to make every scenario about, well, let me kind of rephrase that. Um, is it a sort of a general idea that all the scenarios should be balanced or are you willing to offer unbalanced scenarios, you know, noting that they're maybe unbalanced in favor of one side or the other, uh, just for the interest Healthy. value of Mitten them? Dean and myself, go on. scenarios are often unbalanced. They're just, they can be learning scenarios, introductory scenarios. I tend to try and pick campaign starts that are ones that will be interesting for both players. But I, I, I believe in all my designs, I, I try and make sure that the game has is fun to play, it follows roughly history, and it has good replay value, whichever side you want to play it on. And I think with OCS as a stable system, you can easily do that because the core rule booklet has stood the test of time and the exclusive rules and the developments are evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Yeah. yeah. And I and and a no win scenario, what's a good example? Hold on. We've got a buffering. Yeah, we've got a okay. Now, now we're back. Uh sorry, a little buffering problem there. Um it's good. In Crimea you uh, you know, the initial German assault into Crimea is war on a shoestring. They have not a lot of forces and a lot of distance to uh, uh, to cover. Uh, but when they eventually break into Sevastopol, 
you know, they've got a lot of force and they've got things like Dora to blow their way through the uh, through the defenses. This, but the Soviet has some things to decide. So we, we've added an interesting mechanism to that scenario so that Soviets can get more troops, but then the Germans have less time, that uh, have more time to conquer the city. So they, yeah. you know, or the, the Germans can get more troops, then they have less time to conquer mm. the city. So there's a fun little game there. There's also a Trapanyag game. That's just a couple turns long, and that's the uh, the part where Manstein evicted the Soviets from the eastern part of Crimea before the Sevastopol battles. That's not a very fair fight, uh, but it's you know, but it uh, that was a one a little bit like France 1940. They roll the uh, snake eyes yeah. or or, or boxcars on tend, their time. I tend to. I mean, I have lots of scenarios for Third Winter that aren't in the game. I put one in the special yeah. ops, you know, the, yeah, the robber grab, grab, because you want to balance, you, you recognize that people, for, for, you know, forget what's happening today, four maps, large game, not possible for many people, even one map. But if you can show them smaller maps around that, like the Karabagrad, I would like to issue far more through either Twitter feed, yourself, Gatter or others, as the designs come out. I think that's a discussion I'd like to have with MMP because obviously the box game stand, is standalone, and I think there's only about forty odd of Third Winter left before it sells out. Um, not a pun to play to get people to buy it because many people have it. But I mean, once that goes, I would still like to support the thing with scenarios, whether they're balanced or not, because there are many in that game. The round could be have do give you an example. I've got one for the, the storming of Odessa and things like that. Mm -hmm. That are small ones you could play in a, a couple of evenings or whatever, and it would again bring in troops like the Romanians you may not see in operation very much. So they don't have to be balanced, is a long answer. They just need to be fun to play and see if you can do better than history, like you many. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, when you talk to MMP about what would they like from us independent, uh, you know, the, the independent design community or the freelancers. You know, they they want big games to sell. Uh, you know, so the multi map kinds of things, and they want uh, they uh, one mappers uh, or less than one mappers. So Luzon, Crimea, uh, if we do a, 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 a Kurlan Peninsula, uh, you know, those will all be one mapper or less uh, kinds of games. But they want to uh, balance those, you yeah. know, uh, but in, I in between the really large. Agree. Games. And, you know, speak thinking laterally, I do not want to restrict free, free to copy materials that I have getting out to people who kindly bought my design games. And I have a lot of backup material. Now, whether that comes through MMP, going into a more deep and meaningful conversation, Gary, or it comes through other mediums like yourself and others, I feel is open to discussion. Because I think if people have shelled out 200 bucks on a game, they should get continued use of, out of that game. And I can support that. Yeah, because the materials are ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I will let you guys get back to it. And we'll let you guys pack up and get ready to go over to dinner. Um, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for this uh, report from the top secret upstairs undisclosed location. That the uh, and I, I hope you guys are obviously going to be playing for another five six days yet, right? So we're getting to, no. This weekend is Sunday. Gonna, Sunday's the pickup. Sun, Sunday. Is the pickup. Okay. Off. Yeah. Oh, so you still got a full day. So okay. So that's awesome. I feel like um, back in the UK sometimes. Is, is there a sense that you're going to do this again in in this or a similar location instead of Tempe? Uh, it's yeah, been it's, talked yeah, about. We've been talked about. You know, uh, uh, Tempe. The challenge with Tempe is it, it's significantly more expensive to get to than Baltimore, and mm -hmm. uh, you know that the hotel is different than it had been. Uh, it's changed hands, and it, they've changed the dates to a. Yeah, and, and if you look, include myself, the UK folks, the Italian folks, Thomas, East Coast, Whoa. East Coast is less time difference, far cheaper. Hence, you know, coming here or doing something similar as OCS event, or coming to Sandusky for Winterfest. You know, I can do both for the price of one Tempe. Yeah. Or, or some of the Americans can go to Europe as we did last mm -hmm. fall, and that we'll try. We've even talked about doing one just west of London near where I live, so I don't have. Yeah, or, or one in uh, in Italy. We're, yeah, we're exactly. The one we did in Italy last yeah, yeah. year. So, hey, guess we'll we'll make noise about that once we get that. We'll let uh, you know. Stuff. But thank you. Yes, please thank do. Thank you for hosting. All right. Yeah.
Yeah, it is a joy to talk to you guys every time. So if I do not, I'm sure I will talk to both of you before February. But if if not, I will see you both there in February at Winterfest. Yeah, excellent. Okay. okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank Cheers. you, Gary. Thanks, Bye -bye. guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching and have oh, a great night. <laughs>